All right, guys. So let's move on to the next set of uh, statements now. Uh, we already seen DQL a lot, data query language. Let's move on to DCL a bit, which is your data control language in which, uh, you know, there are two uh, major control language um, commands that we use. One is grant and second one is revoke. Now, both these, both of these are used basically to grant permission to access some database, right? So you have created database, you are there and the reports can be created by using, you know, downloading or probably extracting data from the databases. But you have to grant uh, permissions basically, isn't it? To uh, access the database and, uh, you know, extract the data from the databases and then make reports out of it. Right. So for that grant is used, right? And revoke as the name suggests is just the opposite of it. That is what you need to do in this case is to revoke the statements or rather revoke the permissions, the access permissions of certain users over here, right? So here what we'll do uh, is that in my own uh, connection, what I can do is I'll create two users over here. One is the root user, which is the primary user, which is myself in my system. And let me create another user over here. Let me create a dummy user and then we'll see how can grant and revoke statement works on these users over here right so let's move on to the sql my sql over here all right now we are in my sql uh, dashboard over here we can just click on one connection and then the connection is going to open up what i'll do now is these are all the databases that i've created some of them are dummy databases some of them are actual databases which are given by sql over here by default databases and a lot of uh, sql files are there as well so what we're going to do is to create a new user which can also be done by you guys as well you can click on server and go on users and privileges so you can just click on this and here we can have we have all the users over here already created a user called as user one so right now i'll just delete this so that i can show you how to create users over here what you need to do these are all the users who can you know access the databases over here i'll just add an account and i'll let's say i'll uh, name of the user will be user underscore one the same name that we give and the password let's say is one two three four five Okay, and once we do this, we need to confirm the password one, two, three, four, five. We need to apply this, right? And you can see there's a user one got, there's a user one which got created over here. This is the thing that we have to do. Now, once we move on to this, if you just go back to home over here and we can just look at this, we can click on databases over here and connect to database. And while this, there's a by default username, the major, the parent, the super uh, user over here, that username will be there. We need to change it to user one and then click on OK. It's going to ask for the password, enter the password. And now this user has logged in. Now, as you can see, there's hardly any database over here, but there is no database over here, right? Because there is no access which is given to the user. Right. Whereas if I just close this and now I actually go to my, I'll just close this application, this particular part, just a minute. Right. I'll just get to this. Right. And I'll give the permission to this particular user. So I'll just open up a different file over here. Right now, the user one will not be able to access any databases over here because the root user, the super user has not given any kind of, you know, privileges or permissions, uh, basically, or access in a way, in more general language is not given to that particular user. So what we'll do is we'll go for, we'll first of all use, let's say I want to use HR underscore EMP. So I go for this particular, this uh, colon, I run this and now I'm using this particular database over here, right? I can go for grant. Now grant, again, after grant, you need to define which statements to get. For example, uh, do I want the user to just retrieve the data from the database? In that case, select statement will be sufficient. But if I, I'm, I'm fine with the username changing the uh, you know, uh, certain things over there. For example, uh, if he wants to update uh, the name of the column, so I can go for update. He wants to delete some of the columns over there, right? Or he wants to drop the database. All these commands that can be given just by giving a comma in between, right? Right now, let's start with just giving select. Grant select on HR underscore EMP to quotes user underscore one colon and now let's run this now once i run this as you can see okay table hr underscore okay i have to give the name of the table over here right so i have to go for the name of the table and the table over here is employees so i'll go for on employees right 
Now, once I do this, right, the excess of the table is given. Can you just see grand select on the, the, the tick, the green tick is there, right? So it means that the user one has got the access to this particular table. Now let's uh, close this file again. Let's see whether this has worked or not. So what we can do is, so now what we can do is we can just open up SQL Workbench again, right? And then click on this database, connect to a database. And this time I'll not go for the root user. I'll go for, I'll not log in as a, the super user, I'll log in as the, the new user that I've created over here. I'll ask for the password, which is one, two, three, four, five. I can click on okay. And now you will be able to see that there's an HR EMP database. And these are the tables that the person can use. Now let me try and, you know, I'll have first give use HR underscore EMP. Now, once I do this and run this, the new user, the actual demo user will now be able to, will now be able to use this particular table. Now we can go for select. Uh, star from employees, right? And if I just go for this and run this, it'll be able to access the data now. Okay. Now, uh, if you want to go for, let's say, insert data, let's say the user wants to insert the data. So I'll go for insert into and let's say employees. The new user is trying to enter some data over here. Okay, employees and uh, values and uh, let me go for just and just trying to enter only a couple of data points over here. Let's say employee ID and let's say I go for the first name, underscore name. These are the two things, these are the two items I want it to enter, right? Why is it showing some kind of problems over here? Insert into employees, is there an error over here? Okay, now let's see. Now values, I'll just put in the values as uh, let's say 59 and I go for uh, the first name as let's say my own name, Saurabh, right? Now, what do you think guys? This query, will it run or will not run? Yes, if you guessed it correct, this will not run because that permission is not there with the user. Obviously insert command denied to the user one. That is the user because I have given only the select rights over here. By giving the select rights, it's been very specifically given to the user that you can only fetch the data and not be able to make changes to the data, right? That is why the user right now is not able to insert any kind of value over here. Cool. Now, uh, what uh, we need to understand is that if I want to change that, I can just log in with my, I'll just close this workbench again, open the workbench again, you know, uh, and this time I'll log in as a root user and I want to update the grant permission, right? So I'll just move on to this and hopefully it should have started from here, but no worries. Now uh, I'll just copy this over here and go for the next lines. I'll say that apart from select, grant him insert permission over here as well. So insert, right? And uh, let's say insert and update. Let's say these are two more permissions I want to give to this particular user. So I've given that, right? So now once I run this, the user one will now be able to, okay, I haven't selected a database over here. So I have to tell use HR underscore EMP, right? Once I do this, SQL understands that we are using this particular database. And now I've given insert and update access to this particular user as well. So let me, Close this, go back to home and connect to database. This time I'll connect to database. I'll connect through user underscore one, right? And I'll just click on okay. It's going to ask for the password, log in through the password. And now I'm logged into the new user account over here, right? So now I want to use, use HR underscore EMP. As we would know, the new user will be able to access the database. Let me confirm that. Select star from employees, right? Now, if I just run this, now I'm trying to insert the data because I've just been given, as a new user, I've just been given the permission to insert data into it, right? So let me try and insert the data over here. Insert into employees right and i have copied one file over here i'll just go for this i'll just take that you know this is the one right so i'll just change this demo data into something right something like let's say saurabh 
Saurabh Sharma and I'll go for S Sharma over here right and I'll go for 234 instead of 654 I'll go for 16 June 99977 I'm not that old right ADVP let's say this let's call it uh, AGM underscore DA right rest of everything seems to be fine now what i'll do is i'll run this and i think now this should run because as a new user i'm given the access to insert and update values into this database i'll run this and there is a problem over here it says the column count doesn't match value count of row one why is that so why is that so let me see all right if you just go to the entire database over here we have one two three four five six seven eight nine ten columns over here and three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven columns over here and i think in fact i think i had dropped one column from this and i forgot to you know remove that from the database right so i think it should be fine now right once we do this I think it should be able to insert the values. Yes, column, column counts match now. And if I run this, right, see, now the new user is able to insert the data into the database. So this is how grant work. Now, apart from this, what you can do as a root user, I'm just writing it over here. You can go for delete column over here as well. Sorry, delete command as well. You can go for drop as well. These are all the access, alter, table. These are all the accesses which can be given to the user depending on what is the level at which the user will be working. If I want to uh, give the entire responsibility of the database to the user, then in that case, I probably have to give all these, you know, accesses to the user over there as well. But if the permission is given just to retrieve data from that particular database, it is much better to keep it to only select or another couple of the commands over there. Right, this is how the grant statement is going to work. The revoke statement is going to work just like in the similar fashion. Now, if I want to revoke the, you know, uh, if I want to revoke uh, the permission over here, I'll just close this. I'll log in as the U root user, right? And I'll go to my original file where I have kept it. I'll just go for this thing. I'll say that now I want to revoke, right? I'll just go for control V and i'll go for revoke command and i'll say that right uh instead of uh i'm, I'm revoking the command to insert the data over here, right all right i uh, forgot one thing that while revoking we need to change it now we're not giving it right so it, it you give to something you revoke from somebody right so i'll have to take it from user one revoke the permission to insert value in this particular table from this particular user simple as that very logical right now if i run this the user one will not have the permission to revoke the data now okay i haven't used the database over here so i'll go for use hr underscore emp because i'm logging in between the you know users over here so every time i use a certain database i have to tell sql that i'm about to use this particular database now if i go for this now the user one will not be able to insert the values in the database please make a note that he can still update the database because i haven't taken revoke the update condition over there right so this is how grant and revoke work in mysql